All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rechakadash. I get up honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and salutations to the Akim and to the elect that are scattered throughout the four corners of this earth to push the truth out of faith and sincerity. I'm the brother Shemar Allah from the Great Millstone, Houston Camp. And this lesson will be entitled that these things are temporal. Um... When I say these things, I'm talking about the things of this life, the things of this world. You know, the the the, the materialistic things, the uh, the hell that we're that we're catching and that we're gonna catch. You know, all of those things, all of these things, are temporary. Right, temporary pain. It would be temporary losses, right? Because we we shouldn't worry about losing nothing on this side because what do Yahweh Shai said? He said that he should, he that lose his life shall gain his life for my sake. You know, let me get that. It's like Luke, I think. But whatever, whichever one pops up, lose life sake. Matthew ten and thirty nine. He that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. Right? So, you lose your life for the Lord. The Lord was going to reward you. But if you save your life or trying to, you know, um, you worried about making it on this side. You want You want this kingdom to go on forever so you can be the... Big businessman, right? And you don't want the kingdom, then you're gonna lose everything, bro. You know, the scriptures say, which I will get that that all of these things, the works that are that are gonna be, that are uh, here, will be burnt up. Everything that's going on will be burnt up and destroyed. You know, so we shouldn't have um, any f attachments to this place. Uh, we have something far more and far greater coming. You know, that's 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 what makes us uh, look past the losses and look past the pain and the the, the, the tribulation. Because you know, uh, of what's coming after the kingdom of heaven, which can't be compared to nothing that is down here on this earth. Nothing can be compared to it. It's like it says in Romans. Romans 8, nothing can be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So this is 2 Corinthians 4 and 17. It says, For our light affliction, which is but which is but for a moment, right? Our light affliction. You know, the things that we are going through, you know, is but for a moment. Even when Esau come down on us, you know, some of us happens to be put to death. You know, that's that's only but for a moment. That pain is but for a moment, right? Just like I was reading in um, Second Maccabees the seventh chapter, you know, when um, the the brothers and their mother were put to death, right? Roughly paraphrased, he was like, he's like, bro, hey, this is this ain't nothing but temporary pain, you know? Man, let me see if I can find that. Uh. Uh, just bear with me. I guess I'm gonna have to kind of go through it and and see. Hmm. Just bear with me. Right, second Maccabees seven thirty six for our brethren who have now suffered a short pain 
are dead under the Most High's covenant of everlasting life, but thou through the judgment of the Most High shall receive just punishment for thy pride. So all of these brothers got put to death. But he said, we have now suffered a short pain. So when Esau do come, you know, we happen to, you know, be amongst that number that have to die for the truth. Hey, this is going to be a short pain. And they knew that they already knew, bro. Hey, what's, what's coming after is going to be so much better. You know, they, they, I believe it was Antiochus, man. He was trying to, you know, force them to do certain things, to go against the laws that's your commandments, and they wouldn't with it. And, they, and each one of them was watching their brothers get put to death, you know. But, hey, like it says, but for a lot of afflictions, but for a moment, or it says, working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Or we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal, right? We're not looking at the things that are seen. You know? You see, you see, you see this, you see this place, right? Just going down. You see people you're finna be dying left to right, you know, but we can't fear none of that. You know? Psalm 91 says, a ten thousand shall fall, roughly paraphrasing. Ten thousand shall fall at thy side, at that right hand, on thy left hand, but it shall not come nigh thee, you know. So we're gonna see these things, you know. All of the things that's gonna be happening, happening, right? You know, that's it's the scripture. It said everything is temporary, you know. All of this is not gonna endure on forever, right? So like I said, you shouldn't be worried about losing anything. Oh, I got this nice car, you know. <laughs> I got this uh this 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 woman or I got kids, you know, because the most side, you know, he if you are his men are the chosen, he's gonna protect he's gonna protect you and your family. You know. But like everything else, like cars and clothes and shoes and shit, you gotta you got money, you got bit. you shouldn't be worried about none of that shit, bro. You know, all of that is going to fade away, right? But it says, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal, right? The kingdom of heaven, that is eternal. The riches that we will have, the, the, the family that we will have, you know, the, uh, the things that we, that we will possess are eternal, you know, down here, you know, things, this shit is temporary. Anybody can, you got, a, you got a nice car, somebody can break in your car and steal it. You know? Somebody can steal that. Right? But, kingdom, can't, in, in the kingdom of heaven, ain't gonna be none of that going on. This is first, Peter. First Peter one verse three. It's blessed be the power and father of our Lord Yahweh Mashiach, which is the true name of uh Jesus Christ, who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy had begotten us again to a lively hope by the resurrection of Yahweh Shai from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that fadeth not away. Reserved in heaven for you. So the things that we're gonna get in the kingdom, but our fate is not away. And inheritance incorruptible, undefiled. It says reserved in heaven for you. So nobody can take that. Right? And these things will be possessed, will be your possession forever. Forever. And like bro, you got you can have a car down here. That bitch can, you know. You get a certain mileage on that on that thing, that, that thing gonna start breaking down. Right? You got you got certain shoes that you like them, them motherfuckers ain't gonna last forever. It's gonna come to a point where you gotta buy you gonna have to buy some more shoes. You know? <laughs> like anything, bro, like shit shit gets old and you be having to replace it and shit. Bro, you ain't gonna have to do that in no kingdom. Your terry your chariot ain't gonna get old and start having rust on it, bro. You know, you gotta go to the damn chariot mechanic. None, ain't none of that gonna happen, bro. You know? 
No, it say, hey, bro, ain't nothing going to fade away. Anything that, that's that's going to be rewarded unto you for being faithful to the Lord, that's going to be yours for eternity. Women, gold, silver, you know, anything, man. I can't even name everything that we're going to get because it said that scriptures say that we can't even. Our mind like, not like the most high. We don't, we don't know, you know. He said, I have not heard or ear have, I have not seen or ear have not heard the thing that the most I have prepared for them to love them. So that's what we're looking forward to. You know, this is Colossians 3 and 1. If ye then be risen with ye, I will shall seek those things which are above, where ye I will shall sit it on the right hand of the most high. Set your affections on things above and not on things on earth, right? So we put to set our affection. You know, on things above our mind, right? It says mind. This is a Strong's number G, fifty-four twenty-six for from Neo, from Neo. To exercise the mind that is entertained or have a sentiment or opinion by implication to be mentally dis disposed more or less earnestly in a certain direction. Uh, two, first definition three says to direct one's minds to a thing to seek, to strive for. So we that's what we supposed to be seeking, right? We supposed to be seeking the world to come, a world uh where dwell it where is dwelling righteousness. You know, new heavens and new earth is like it says in Second Peter, right? I can go to that. All of these things, bro, are going to be destroyed. So we shouldn't be setting our mind upon these things. You know, because we, we, we're not going to be here forever. You know, in, in captivity forever. We are in captivity. So, you know, it's like you can't really enjoy your life. But you will, though, in the kingdom of heaven. You're an Israelite. Second, Second Peter 3 and 10, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, and the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. And what's going to do that? That's talking about the ICBM nuclear missiles. It's going to melt this place, America. Everything over here is going to be melted. Anything you possess is going to be melted. It's materialistic things, right? You're going to lose all that. You're not even taking this flesh with you. This body can't even go with you. You know, if you get saved, if you're one of those men of that number, and I hope that you are, I hope that I am, you know, I pray that I am, you know. But, yeah, this place is going to be destroyed, man. And um, everything that these people, that the, the because the, the regular person, they got their minds on, you know, uh, striving in this place. What I'm going to do for 20 years from now? What I'm going to do 30 years from now? Right? Give passing money down to kid to their to generations. We ain't worried about that, bro. Shit, we want to be in the kingdom tomorrow. You know? We ain't be trying to think about no 5, 10 years, bro. Hey, no. Nah. Shit. Man, the scripture said hasten the day, man. We want, we want. We want that kingdom, man, where, where righteousness is going to be everywhere. The scriptures say all our people are going to be righteousness. Man, that's what we want, man. This is hell we living in right now, bro. You shouldn't you shouldn't want to be here because we see this thing is coming to an end, right? Just know what's coming after, right? And that should comfort you. It says, Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons are ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, right? So seeing that all these things are going to be destroyed, what type of behavior should you have, right? So you, should, you should be setting your minds on the things that are above, waiting on the return of the Lord, patiently waiting, you know, hoping that this place fall, hoping that he destroys this place, seeking those heavenly riches, you know, the things that we're going to get, the things that we're going to be rewarded with, seeking those things. 
It says, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of the Most High, wherein the heavens shall be on fire, shall be dissolved, and elements shall be melted with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we according to his promise look for a new heavens and a new earth wherein dwell the righteousness. So this is what we're looking for. We're looking for our kingdom to be set up. All right, we're looking for this place to be refreshed. All right, we're looking for wickedness to be put out forever. You know, this is what we want. We don't want to be under any other nation because we were created to be above everybody. You know, this is not the this is not the state that we're supposed to be in. The Most High intended for us to rule over everyone. Deuteronomy seven and six says that He created us to be above all nations. So we are holy people unto Him, separate. We're made us separate. These laws, statutes, and commandments. You know. So this earth is ours, right? Second Ezra is the sixth chapter tells you that the world was made for our sakes, and we're not ruling. We're not ruling right now because we're in captivity. So you should want to gain possession of what's yours. You know? Because we don't really, we don't really, man, own shit. Esau can take anything that we got right now. A house, a car. It's, it's, it's Esau's things. We got it with his fucking um, FRNs. You know, but we just... We hope in the most high, we pray to the most high. We don't fear, we don't fear, man. The most high controls everything that happens in our lives. It's the second Ezra 16 and 41. He that selleth, let him be as he that fleeth the way. And he that buy it as one that will lose. And he that occupy merchandise as he that had no profit by it. And he that build it as he that shall not dwell therein. He that soweth as if he should not reap. So also he that planted the vineyard as that he shall not gather the grapes. They that marry as they that marry as as they that shall get no children, and they that marry not as the widowers, and therefore they that labor, labor in vain. Right? So whatever you do down here, you know, you're not supposed to be trying to look for it, like doing things, you know, for the long run. You know, like you just know, expecting to be here another 30, 40, 50 years. Nah, you're supposed to live like you, um, this place is not about to go out. But knowing that at any given time that it can, you know, like you're still supposed to take care of things. You're still supposed to pay the bill. You're still supposed to go to work, you know. You're still supposed to do these things to survive. Just because we know that the end is coming, it doesn't mean fuck everything, but just don't be trying to establish yourself here for another 60, 70 years. You know, you you planning on cashing out your 401k, you know, at 70 something. We ain't worried about none of that, right? Like I said, we're worried about the things that are coming. Storing up those treasures in heaven. Matthew 6 and 19. We read about that spiritual bank account. Matthew 6 and 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust do it corrupt and where thieves break through and steal, right? Because anything you possess down here, bro, uh, somebody can take that. Somebody can take anything. You can lose it. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust do it corrupt and where thieves do not break through. And still, nobody, nobody can't steal. Like, cause we we fear the Lord. The scriptures say the fear of the Lord is our treasure, right? Isaiah thirty three and six. How can somebody steal fear from you? The fear of the Lord. How can somebody take that away from you? How can somebody take away faith? How can somebody take away something that's reserved in 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 heaven for you? A reward. Who gonna take that? How can somebody take that? They can't. So why not lay up treasures in heaven? Why not do what the most I told you to do? And he's going to reward you. A reward that cannot be stolen. That you will have forever. Except for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Right. And this word is our treasure. This word is like riches. 
you know. So whatever you deem to be your deem you deem to um your treasure to be, that's what you're gonna be focused on. And this is this is what we focus on right here. You know, we worried about the reward that Yahweh Shah is gonna bring, just like he told the disciples. Peter was like, Man, we you know, we didn't forsake everything, Lord. You know, what am I gonna get for doing that? This is what he told him. Matthew nineteen twenty nine and everyone that has forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. So you're gonna be repaid for the things that you are doing for the Lord. Right? It's not in vain. He said a hundredfold. Can you can you imagine a hundredfold? A number amount of, of of riches and possessions, you know. Man, you can't even explain it. Right? It's like when, when Paul, when he got stoned, right? He said he's saying everything. He said it's unlawful for him to utter. I mean, he couldn't even put it into words. The stuff that he didn't see. So how much more of the things that we going to see? Right? So, you know, that really was the lesson, man. Like I said, you know, um, it's just everything just temporary, right? The, the, the pain and everything that we're going to go through, the, Jacob's trouble, that's temporary. You know? The things that we that that we losing, right? That's 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 temporary. Those things are temporal, right? But we will gain far more better things. We we will gain a far more better life, right? Than the one we're living right now, you know. So that's really the lesson. So with that, I'm gonna say shalom.